I'm here in front of the Wine Lounge in Capture Plaza on Taquitz Canyon in beautiful Palm Springs. And we're going to be talking today with Ron Marshall, the board member of the Palm Springs Preservation Foundation, who brought, who was instrumental in bringing Capture Plaza back to life. Ron, it's great to meet you. And I, you. I happen to hold, be holding these uh, PSPF Palm Springs Preservation playing cards. You want to play? Sure. Okay, you want to pick sure. a card? Absolutely. Ooh. This was not prearranged. No. What did you pick? I picked Class 1 Historic Site, Tockets Plaza. Tockets Plaza, now known as Captor Plaza. You're Whoa, right. are you going to make a new deck? <laughs> <laughs> I think we won because we're here now, and I'm so excited to be talking with Ron about this amazing site that almost wouldn't be here today because it was almost demolished. So can you give us a little insight on how this came to be? Well, it was a long preservation fight and unlike many preservation fights that don't have a happy ending, mm -hmm. this one fortunately had a very happy ending. The fight to save Tarquitz right. Plaza and to restore, uh, restore, preserve. How long did this take? When did it start? And Well, it started in, in the middle of uh, 2015. Okay. And uh, it, it uh, had a lot of twists and turns. Uh, it even got as close as having a demo permit almost uh, passed across the counter in the city. As far as the timeline goes, this mm -hmm. was pretty much the big thing that the new, newly elected city council had thrown in their lap. Of course, okay. you know, mm -hmm. they had the city council members who were duly elected were very well aware because this is what was in the newspaper. Yeah. This is what this it's community was talking about. So yeah. <laughs> so they were happy they were happy to sign off on this one. Well there's yeah. lots of light and we're we're looking straight behind us at San Jacinto and the peaks and the building seems to reflect Oh, it absolutely does. The peaks does. of the mountain. It's so interesting. It absolutely does. And, and Hugh said that that was his intent with these great geometric shapes mm. to go ahead and mm -hmm. emulate, to go ahead and echo the mountains. Because, of course, here in Palm Springs, it's all about the mountains. Right. Isn't it? So this piece of architecture really reflects that. And I, I think because so much of the town is low, these projecting pieces of building really do have an inordinate impact. Well, that's great. It's been great to talk to yeah, you, Ron. There's pleasure. so much to learn. And um, it, what would we do without Palm Springs Preservation Foundation in this city, our beautiful town of Palm Springs? Thank you for saying Thank so. you so much for everything the foundation's done. Our pleasure. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. We were very fortunate to um, interact with design to be given the opportunity to work on this fire station project. And it was highly recommended from the city to um, work with you. The city didn't really have to twist my arm. <laughs> it was a pleasure to work with him. Uh, he was involved in the aesthetics of the development of the exterior building to make sure that it flows very well from the original building. Um, and as a matter of fact, it was more than just the building. It was a whole experience of getting to know him and talk to him about his experience because he's very open about all the um, mistakes as well as all the glory that he has received. And the fact that he has really gone through a renaissance of the entire community of the city of Palm Springs recognizing how wonderfully talented he is in the last 20 years. Okay, this is one of the most exciting homes I've seen on this Modernism Fall Preview Tour and it is the John and Bessie Macy residence in Deepwell, designed by Hugh Kaptur and built by Hogbeck in 1959. I'm sitting here so excited to talk to the new owners, Jerry and Michelle, and I think you've just recently purchased this beauty. It's a gem. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. We feel the same way. Great. Well, tell us about like how, how it came to be and a little bit more history about the house. Well, um, Michelle and I both decided that we wanted to uh, move to the Palm Springs area. Michelle's been coming to um, the desert since she was a little girl, and I've always been a big mid-century modern fan. Mm -hmm. So when we decided to move to, to try to find a place here, we wanted a view. We wanted a pool. And the view they have. <laughs> Check that off too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, of course, we had to have a, have, had to have a pool. And um, we also wanted an, a, a, a true original mid-century modern home. Mm -hmm. And then last on the list, and the thing that we thought we would never really find was something that was architecturally significant. And uh, we got lucky. 
And I think Hugh, Hugh Kapto paid a visit today, is that correct? Yes, yep, Great. he was here and um, we've been working with him um, to help with some ideas on making some changes to the house and oh, really? also trying to Interesting. restore some of, the, some of the things back to its normal state. But you did very well, I'll tell you. Welcome to Palm Springs. Thank you very much. Uh, we feel you. very fortunate. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jerry and Michelle. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. We are very, very happy to dedicate this little street that doesn't appear to be much today, Hugh, but I understand there are plans to take it all the way to the Canadian border. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll begin now, Hugh, Barbara, if you'll assist Hugh, uh, or, or, uh, with, there's, it's very mechanical here, Hugh, if you'll step up there, and I'd like you to pull one of those strings. Yay. So Modernism Week and Fall Preview is in full swing, and we are here today on a beautiful day in Palm Springs to celebrate this gentleman, who of course is local resident and architect, Hugh Kapter. Hugh, thank you for joining us today. And I think if we just look up to our left here, we see this is why we're here. It's because you had a street named after you today. Well, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> uh, never in my, my life did I ever think I would be getting the accolades that I've been getting. And, you know, in all due respect, I think it's the other architects that were here uh, during the 50s and the 40s also that, uh, and only because I'm still alive, uh, Am I getting these accolades? <laughs> but but they also deserve the uh, you know Bill Cody and Williams and Williams yes. and Wexler and Harrison and Clark and Frey and all all those right. architects that were so instrumental in developing Palm Springs over the years. And I would like to say uh, it's because of all of you that we have a beautifully architecturally significant city to live in. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's true. Right? That's true. All right, <laughs> thank a, you once again. We appreciate you being with us. Okay. And congratulations. Oh, thank you, thank you. And thank you, Palm Springs. Yeah. Well, this has to be one of the most magnificent views in Palm Springs. We're here at the Santorini House check it out with Dan and Tom the owners who have just done an amazing thank you. restoration thank you can you tell us a little bit about the history of the house sure the house was built in 1977 by a man named Bill Nicholson who mm -hmm. was the architect and we actually had the pleasure of having Bill come out and see the house after we finished and he was very very complimentary which we were glad it went that way and he didn't Hate it. Fantastic. Because so. it was a big reimagination. Yeah. You really changed the house in dynamic ways. It was round windows and cave like, and you turned it into Santorini Greek with lots of square angles. And yeah. Beautiful. So you purchased the home, when did, when did you purchase in it? In 2017. Okay. And we spent about uh, 18 to 20 months renovating it. Okay. So you completely. Everything. Wow. everything we took about 15 dumpsters out the outside was sprayed it was it's made the way the house was built is they used large weather balloons okay and they inflated them to make the different domes of the house Ooh. then they covered those with rebar and a mesh material and then they sprayed it with a concrete similar to what you would do with a, a swimming pool okay and then they popped the balloons? And then they popped the balloons. <laughs> yeah, and the balloons remained in the water Were you here on somewhere. balloon popping no, day? We oh. No, we were not. And then the outside, we had resprayed with, it's the same material you would use on a foam roof. Okay, all right. So the house stays very, very cool. It must, The walls yeah. are, you know, about 18 inches thick. And there's a little, like, at the top, is that like a little it's lookout? It's a little lookout spot. Lookout spot, um, very cool. It would make for a, a nice outdoor bedroom when the weather is nice. Right. Ever since we finished it, we've been renting it for um, fashion shoots, okay, um, photo shoots, women's wear. We're not yeah. planning to do vacation rentals, as okay. it were, for families because it's a white house and it wouldn't survive yeah. with a lot of use. Oh yeah! And Thank you so much, Dan, Tom, for taking the time to speak with us. The Santorini House, and do you think you'll be on Modernism Spring? We think we might. All right, yeah. so there's still time. Yeah, come check it out.
I'm Conrad. And I'm Claudia. Did you like what you just saw? Of course you did. Then push on this button and subscribe. And remember to ring the bell. And then that way you'll have the, the Palm, Palm Springs, Springs Point, point of, of View. view.